In today's video I want to show you the Starlight Linux tablet. In this case we are not talking about an ARM CPU, but an Intel N200 CPU, so you can install almost any application you want, or change the operating system that comes with the tablet to for example Windows, so basically this is a computer in a tablet form factor. By default it comes with Ubuntu and you can see that I'm running Steam on Ubuntu, also I'm running Android inside Ubuntu thanks to Waydroid. But you can do all of these things in a normal Linux computer, so if you want a tutorial, leave a comment in the video. So now let's take a look to the internals of this device. This device is a computer in a tablet form factor, as I said, and it comes with an Intel N200 CPU and 16GB of RAM. We don't have any fans, so the device is pretty quiet, and also we have a 12 inches screen. And this screen is very sharp, it's one of the best things of this tablet. Also, you can take a look to all the different ports that comes with the tablet. Basically, we have two different USB Type-C that can do video output, but we also have a micro HDMI. Also, we have a micro SD card slot. You can also take a look to the different features about the software. And you can buy this keyboard case that is backlight and this is pretty good quality. Also, you can find the specification for the screen and it comes with a 65W charger. Also, you can open the device and replace the RAM or the hard drive. And you can install a lot of different distributions that you can take a look here. Now, if we click on the configure button, I will show you the configuration that I have for this video. I bought this myself and I will show you the total cost. So basically, you can select the SSD that you prefer. In my case, I have the 500 gigabytes because I think this is more than enough and it's the cheapest version. And also, you can select the operating system that comes by default installed with the tablet. In my case, I have selected Ubuntu 24, so the tablet comes with this operating system installed. But if you want to see some other operating system, leave a comment in the video. Also, you can select the proper plug for your country. In my case, I'm from Spain, so I will select this one. And you can select if you want the keyboard case. In my case, I selected the US version. Also, you can include the pencil if you want and you can select a longer USB cable, but I just leave the default version, a 2 meter one. So the total cost is almost 800 euros, but depending on your choices, please check if they have it in stock or not, because it can take a little while to ship. Now this is the unboxing, this is what it comes in the packaging, basically we have the wall charger, this is a 64 watts, you can kit this accessory and you have the standard US or Chinese plug but in my case as I live in Spain I need this accessory that came with the tablet so I just need to attach this to the charger and I'm good to go. Apart from this it came with the pencil and also with the USB cable. This seems to be a very good USB cable, it's 2 meter long and you can charge any device you want with it. Also we have the tablet of course and we have also this case that comes with the keyboard. This is an all-in-one, the back panel and the keyboard are together, you cannot separate them and you can see that it falls like a book. Also it has a hanger for the pencil in the left part, so you just basically unfold it to place the tablet in the surface you want, like you're seeing right now, and you can get the tablet and place in the pogo pins that are in the bottom part. Everything attached magnetically and also the tablet has the detection of the lid. So if you close the lid, you can put the tablet into suspend mode. But I have to say that this doesn't work 100% of the time, so make sure that the screen is powered off when you close the lid. Apart from that, the keyboard is very good quality, you can type it without any problem. So I'm gonna share now some thoughts of the device. Here I also install Waydroid, this is an Android container inside Linux, you can install this in every Linux computer, not just in this tablet. And this is very handy because as this device has a touch screen, you can use it like a normal Android tablet. The performance is not the best because you are emulating. But if we take a look, for example, in PBS SPB to the drivers, we can see that we can use Vulkan. This improves a lot the performance in the game. So you can play some Android games that are not available for other platforms. Apart from that, you can use this device like a normal laptop. For example, you can program installing Visual Studio Code or PyCharm or whatever. I have an example. I have been using this tablet for programming and I have a couple of scripts here and it just works very well. I have installed Python and I can activate virtual environments without any type of problem. Also we have this shop that basically you can install any flat pack 
or any Ubuntu native application, but I prefer to install Flatpatch. You can see here the different options and I always select Flatpak. So just click on install and wait until the application starts. Here you can see that I can draw without any problems using the pencil provided and this pencil has a pressure detection. So if you press the pencil against the screen, the line will be wider. And if you press just a little bit, the line will be thinner. Also, as I show in a lot of videos in the channel, but in Android devices, you can use the terminal as a normal Linux computer. And here I will install NeoFetch and you can run the commands. If I run NeoFetch, you can see that I'm using Ubuntu and you can see the 16 GB of RAM and all that information. Now for this part of the video, I want to show you how to run Steam and how is the gaming. I'm going to attach a Bluetooth gamepad this is very cheap, this costs like around 20 bucks and you can find it in Aliexpress. I will leave the link to this gamepad in the description of the video. And I'm going to put Steam into big picture. This is the UI that Steam Dev used, so this is thought to be used with a gamepad. You can navigate everything from the gamepad without touching the keyboard or the mouse, so you can see that you can navigate between games. Also, we are in Linux, so if we want to run a game, we need to do it in the compatibility mode with Proton. This means that you have to go to this option, go to the compatibility, enable this and select the version of Proton that you want. You can try different versions to see if the game runs or not. In this case, Forager opens a window mode, but you can modify it in the settings. And I'm going to open a different game because I'm not sure why Forager didn't detect the gamepad. But if I run, for example, Nexomon, this game works perfectly. Again, check that you are running this game in compatibility mode because it is not, not available on Linux, it's only available on Windows. But you can see that we are running it perfectly. Keep in mind that the CPU and the GPU of this device is not very powerful, so we are going to be able to run only light games like this one or other indie games, probably some Hades, but we are not going to be able to run AAA game like uh, GTA 5 or Call of Duty or something like that. But also there is an, the option to use some streaming application like Xbox Cloud, the Game Pass in the cloud or whatever. Or even you can stream a game with Steam from your desktop PC to this device so you can play harder games. Now you can close the game from the gamepad without touching the keyboard or the mouse and you can also uh, exit Steam, power the device or reboot the device. So if we go to this menu, you can exit Steam and now we are again in the laptop. To finish with the gaming section, I want to show you how is the emulation. So I install PPSSPP. This is also a flat pack package, so you can install it from the shop. And I want to show you that you can use the gamepad without any problem. We can use Vulkan because the Intel GPU is detected and we are going to run the games in 4x resolution. This is in 1080p. So you can see that this game is one of the hardest of the PSP to emulate and it's running at 60 FPS without any problem at 4x resolution. This means that you are going to be able to play most of the games at 4x or even at 5 or 6x resolution. Apart from that, you can install emulators for a lot of different consoles. You can run PS2 games, 3DS, probably Switch games, but only the lightest Switch games, not something like Zelda Breath of the Wild, but you can emulate Hades, Mario Wonder, or things like that. You can see that here I have installed Line 3DS, PPS SPP, or Lutris to run some games. Now we are going to focus on the productivity because this laptop is or tablet is very good for that. You can see that I have installed LibreOffice. This is an alternative, a free alternative to Excel or PowerPoint or Word. And they have basically most of the same features, but in a free version and open source. Here I want to say that the typing experience in this keyboard is very good. The feeling of the keyboard is very good and also the trackpad works perfectly. Also, you can run any program like OBS or whatever thing because this is a 64 bits architecture. This is an Intel CPU, so you can install almost anything. And now let's move on to some playback. 
I want to show you the performance of some playback in YouTube in different resolution. This is Full HD. It handles the playback without any type of problem. You can watch any type of Full HD content and you're not going to have any frame drop. You can see, I hope, in the start for nerds. Now let's move on to some playback in 4K. For example, let's put this video on 4k and i have to say that the 4k playback on youtube i don't know if this is because i have something in the background but the video lags a lot and you can see that we have a lot of frame drops so it seems that 4k maybe is too much if you are doing something else now let's put the video instead of 4k in 2k and let's see the performance in this case i can see that there are some frame drops but the video is totally watchable so it is not like in the 4k where you cannot see anything because it lags a lot here if you close the stats and you don't look for the frame drops you can see that the screen runs without any problem you can see the video goes smooth and you can watch a complete video without any type of problem even you can advance the video a little bit and you can see the video without any type of problem. And I have to say that the screen is very good. This is a 2K screen, almost 13 inches and it is amazing. So now I want to show you how you can use this connected to an external monitor. You have two different USB Type-C ports and both can do video output. So you can connect a USB Type-C to SDMI hub and you can connect up to three monitors at the same time and i tested this in my main rig connected to three monitors and i have to say if you open heavy programs in the three monitors you are going to notice some lag so i don't recommend that but if you are using just one or two monitors you are not going to have any type of problem here you can see that for example in the big monitor i put a video and in the other monitor, in the screen of the tablet, you can do whatever you want. For example, you can do some programming or whatever you want. Now, in a few moments, I will show you how is the experience of this as a normal tablet and not like a computer. But I have to say that I prefer using this just like a laptop. Mainly because I like a lot this keyboard and the trackpad. I think they are very good and also because I don't have a case and there are no cases available so if you want an stand you need to take all the cover with the keyboard so you can place it on a surface you can see that this is the tablet without the keyboard it is a bit heavy you can see it has some cameras in the front and some cameras in the back and you can see that it has a screen rotation so if you rotate the tablet you can see that it goes to landscape and portrait and also if you tap in a text field you can see that there is a touch keyboard so you can write anything you can open the terminal or open the web browser and you can open this touch screen and use the tablet like a normal tablet i think this is a very good feature because not all the linux tablet comes with a touch keyboard and about the battery i have to say that i got like five hours or so in balance mode but it has fast charging so i think i will use this more like a laptop instead of a tablet and please if you want to see more videos about this device testing anything you want leave a comment in the video also if you want to see windows running on this device or whatever so i hope you like the video please share like and subscribe